Welcome back everyone. And if you're new here, welcome. My name's Gerald. And today we are going to be doing some planting for our juices. I'm just driving back up to the garden. But today we're gonna to be planting some beets and some carrots. And I really wanna get the carrots in because it's been raining the past few days. And it's also raining today. It's kind of chilly, but now's the perfect time to get the carrots in because the ground is good and wet, obviously, from the rain. And that's great for carrots because carrots need consistent moisture. They need plenty of moisture. So if they dry out even for a split second, you're gonna have a bad carrot time. So since it's wet, and also since it's still pretty cool, the ground will stay wet for quite a long time. We'll have good consistent moisture for a while, and I'll increase our chances of getting some really, really good carrot germinations. Really the biggest struggle is gonna see if I uh, can make it back up to the garden without getting stuck in this low spot, so. Uh, all right, made it. Now I'm gonna be using this cool little tool called the Jang Seeder to be seeding all of my stuff today. And I got it last year, and that is probably the best investment that I have ever made into any garden equipment, aside from this fence. But that, that thing right there is so nice. And the reason that this thing here is so nice is because it saves so much time. You know, everyone knows that cliche saying, time is money, time is money, time is money. Time is not money. Time is worth way more than money, infinitely more than money. Time is a type of currency. It's a very, very, very limited resource. You, if you have a job, trade your time for money. But if you're spending more time getting money than money to get time, you're, you're doing it a little backwards. And no, I know this isn't just an immediate flip, an immediate change, but you should gradually start looking for ways where you can start trading your money to start getting some of your time back. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 say, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And it's literally saying, walk around circumspectly, diligently, pay attention to the things that you're doing day by day, be wise, redeeming the time, redeeming literally meaning buy up to rescue from loss, rescue your time from loss, buy it back because the days are evil and evil. They're not meaning like evil as in wicked, but evil as in they're long, they're hard. This life is hard. See, be wise, use your money to buy back your time, to rescue it from loss. I, I didn't put that, I didn't put it in there. I, I didn't. <laughs> so the best thing that you will ever, ever do with your money is use it to buy things that help you get some of your time back. And this beautiful little instrument here does just the thing. Yes, it's pretty expensive. It was about five, six hundred dollars, but it is giving me back so much time that that five to six hundred dollars is nothing. Now, any of y'all that garden know that sowing your seeds can be pretty tedious, especially with like when you're direct seeding and stuff like carrots, you got to sprinkle them in row by row. It can get very, very long and annoying. And when you have seven four foot wide by 25 foot beds here and another 10 30 foot beds over there, you'll be out here for weeks trying to seed everything. It just gets irrational at that point. There's no point in doing it. So, this little thing here for gardeners, especially more market gardeners that have a lot more space that they need to sow, this thing right here saves plenty of time. I'm about to show you how fast 
this thing can see if I can get these seeds <laughs> up out of my pocket because I'm sure it's struggling. <laughs> the carrots that I'm going to be sowing today are some coral carrots from Fedco and some scarlet nantes, nantes carrots from Fedco and also some Napoli carrots that I accidentally left down at the house. <laughs> and all that I need to do ah, is pour these seeds into this hopper here. This is where the seeds come out of. There's like a little roller in there. It helps with spacing the carrots. It helps with how many carrots get dropped out of the hopper so not too many are falling out, which also saves you a bunch of time because if you get them seeded right, right, if they fall out of this seeder right, then you won't have to waste time thinning later on in the year. That is a whole annoying process too. So this thing saves you a bunch of time. There's some little gears. In the intro, y'all saw me uh, put that little cover on and the gears that are underneath that cover also help with the spacing between the seats as well. So it's this thing has a lot of different features. I ain't gonna bore y'all too much with them because I could get real technical and real long-winded. This thing is nice, just know that. <laughs> but now guys, we have our carrots in here. So we just gotta throw them back in here. Quick click pop, and we're ready to go. Now I'm only going to be doing like two smaller beds. I'm in our smaller beds right now. I'm doing two smaller beds with the Napoli carrots and the coral carrots because one, I've never planted them before. So I don't really know. Oh, I forgot to do something before. I seed, I roll to make sure that our carrots are falling out, which they are. I'm doing these smaller bits here. These ones I'm in right now are only 20 feet long. I'm doing these two varieties of carrots that I've never tried before in these so they don't take up too much space. And then I have some longer 30 foot bits over on the other side that I'm going to plant the scarlet knotties in because I always have good success with those and they grow pretty big and I want some big carrots to have for our juices so that's what I'm doing in these smaller beds see how fast this is going this is one row at a time some people will use this and like and run as they do it so they get done a lot faster <laughs> let's cover those up Hopefully those aren't too deep. I don't think they are, but they could be. So get these going. I'm doing seven rows. This bed is four feet wide, if I didn't mention. So I can fit quite a bit of carrots into here. Usually your carrots, you don't want to bury any deeper than a half inch. Really any deeper than a quarter inch, but especially not past a half inch. These just seem a little deep to me, so. We'll see. Might have made these rows a little too tight. Might only be able to fit six in here, but that's still a good, good amount of rows. Yeah, I only do six in this bit. Spaced them a little closer than I wanted to, but that'll be all right. Okay. And just like that, I'm done with one bed. That. It's a time saver like a mug, for real. That took a couple minutes. I would still be on the very first row if I was hand seeding. So, yeah. Never I have any extra seed left over in this thing. Ugh. I just like to throw it out onto the mulch. Broadcast it, see what comes up. It's pretty fun. You just throw seeds out and stuff grows. <laughs> so, we'll see if those come up. Now, obviously, unless I still have a whole bunch of seed left in here, I'll save that, but it was barely anything left. Most annoying thing about taking these tarp covers off is when it rains, they get extremely, extremely heavy. And I don't think I'm going to be able to roll this off of all three of these beds I have here. So I'm just trying to get this second one exposed. And I've almost got it. Ugh. But it is just so much water piled up right here see that bulge down there that is all water 
since I left my knife at the house, I'm just gonna poke a hole with it or two so that water will drain out of there. All right, I think we've got it done here. Let's get this bed exposed. Uh, a little more. Mm. Sweet. Got it off and kept it away from our garlic. That's coming up well. Now the most annoying part about carrots is that they take quite a while to germinate, like 14 days, I think like 14 to 20 days, something like that, 14 to 30 it could be. But since they take so long to germinate and get growing, it really gives the weeds a chance to start coming up and really competing. These tarps have done a really, really good job of killing off most of the weeds in these beds, but they don't kill off every single weed unless you have these tarps on. Like you really work the tarp for like a year or so. And also, weed seeds will blow in too. So you gotta contend with those as well. But they'll germinate and sprout and get going a lot sooner than your carrots will a lot of the times. So they can really, really be a problem and outcompete your carrots. But the good thing about this cedar again is that one it takes out the labor of having to thin it also takes out all of this time consuming labor of ha having to plant it all so you will have to do all of that stuff plant uh, re-sow after you harvest you will have to do all that on top of cultivating and the weeding and everything so i mean you will be very very tired and running very low on energy <laughs> trying to keep up with all that so this thing does a great job at keeping some energy in you giving you the energy to cultivate and whatnot and the time to do it as well we got our hopper full again now these are the bigger beds i was telling you all about these are the 30 foot beds these are four foot. all my beds are four feet wide but these are the 30 foot long beds and they Oh, we need more space for carrots than anything because, start on this side, because you can't do pick and come again carrots. Once you pick a carrot, it's out of the ground. You know, with kale, I can pick a couple leaves from each plant and those leaves will grow back and I'll be able to pick from for quite a while. You pull a carrot out the ground, that's it, it's done. So I need a lot more space for carrots and beets too. See if we can actually fit seven in this one. Space it a little closer. Here's two. Yeah, yeah, my lines ain't perfect, I know. I'm getting better. Here's three, four. Here we go. I done pulled the thing out. <laughs> it's five, six, and seven, nice thing doesn't do a really good job of seeding through mulch if there's a light mulch it will but they'll get caught in between something i don't know what to get caught with and it'll make it get stuck just like that makes up a lot of time i'll catch up with y'all when i start doing the beats i'll let you know what beats i'm doing and then from there i'm pretty much done i mean it's I, don't, I ain't spending all day doing this like I would in the past, so I'll catch up with y'all in a second. All right, guys, I'm about to do the beets, and I don't have these labeled, but these are some Detroit Red Short Top Beets, and these right here, I don't even know how to pronounce this for real, Chowgia, Chowgia, I don't know, but these, C-H-I-O-G-G-A, whatever. I'm going to mix them. I'm going to throw them in here, do them a little mix. But they are both from Fedco. Pretty much all of my seeds are from Fedco. They're either from Fedco, MI Gardener, or this company called Seeds Now. Those are pretty much the only seeds that I use. But I need to switch. Here, I'll show y'all. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking out this roller. 
here. The cedar comes with uh, different rollers and sizes here. Show you one might not weigh in. But see, it has little different holes and stuff in it. This here, and it goes right in that part. But for different sizes of seeds, for different types of spacing, some of them only have like six of these holes and they're pretty big. So you can do like beans and corn and stuff. Some have 12, some have 24. Like this one I'm using for carrots has 24 holes in it. So it helps with spacing and all a bunch of other stuff. So I need to switch the roller for the one that's suitable for beets. You see these holes are a little bit bigger to fit the beet seeds in. Like... <laughs> Look, Dusty, this to make sure the seeds fall out and they are falling out. Pop the lid on, give it a good little shake so they're mixed up good. And we're off. Ugh. See in this bed, I'm about to plant them in. There's some vole holes in them. So I've been reading up on how to take care of those. I saw some real good insights. So when I get ready to take care of these voles, I'm going to show you how I do it. Now for the beets here, I'm going to be doing slightly less rows. I'm going to do five rows instead of seven. Simply because their foliage gets a little bit bigger. The roots, the beet root needs a little more space to size up so not a whole lot more space than the carrots but a little more it's starting to rain i have finished right on time it has just started trying to rain so perfect in the yard at garden do y'all rush and get y'all seeds into the ground when y'all know it's rain coming in the forecast too? Because I will scramble to get some stuff in the ground so they get some good rain on them. <laughs> but we got our carrots in. We got our beets in. So soon those will be coming up. And we'll have some real fresh produce ready to go for our juices. And in the next week or two, yeah, the next week or two, it'll be time to start transplanting the kales and the celery and a couple other things. So stuff is about to pick up really really quickly for us and we can't wait until it does and to bring y'all along and show y'all because this it's about to get real real for real for real so stay tuned for all that we'll catch y'all in the next video peace